That's what they said 1980 would happen to broadcast television. Terrestrial radio will never die. It's free, it's mobile, and again, you're not going to find um, a, a medium like that that has a lot of the strengths and value that it does. Do I think that it will have to change and morph and adapt to new technology and, the, and new ways of doing business? Yes, just like every other business. But I don't think it will ever go away. You know, you still have a large portion of the United States that, you know, broadcast radio is free to everyone, and almost everyone has an FM radio somewhere. Um, all the cars still have FM radios. You know, even the MP3 players and, and the new technology that came out, all of a sudden, a few years after the new technology is introduced, they start incorporating FM tuners in them. So, you know, my argument is if, if that's the case, then why are they looking back and saying, oh, well, we need to we need to also address, you know, terrestrial broadcast radio because it's still a very popular medium. I see the future of broadcast radio, um, I think it's changing for the better. Um, I was very frustrated when I left um, the broadcast industry in 2002 with, with the state of things and I see um, that the people that, that truly are in it because they love the product and they, they love what they do, that they're they're standing up for it and they're starting to make changes um, for the better. Um, they're starting to embrace independent artists. Um, they're starting to try to, they're, they're listening to their listeners and they're trying to make changes so that they make a product or a service that the listeners really like and, and want to, you know, stay with. So I, I'm not sure where it will go. I know it has to change. It will have to adapt to the HD technology. Um, I think that broadcast um, will have to basically join together with you know an online presence um, because again the, the time spent um, again will, will no longer be only with the radio it will have to follow through with another type of platform such as a website or online presence but I see it strong I see it growing the telecommunications act of 1996 was a, a very good and terrible piece of legislation all in one. Um, the theory behind it, its intent was wonderful. The application of it was flawed. Um, what happened is you had consolidation of ownership, you had major corporations such as Clear Channel um, basically taking over. The good thing is it saved a lot of stations, a lot of stations that would have gone black, that were losing money, that didn't have the, the funds and, and the growth to adapt and, and put in new technology such as, you know, the, the systems that, that make it enable for, you know, voice tracking and, and things like that. The bad thing is the impact that it had on the, the human element. Um, all of a sudden you had um, corporate level programming, even though they'll arg all argue that no, they didn't, um, they did. Um, because they, they kind of set the bar of, of what the stations were supposed to be and they did a lot of downsizing so a lot of people lost their jobs so when you have that kind of element you see what's expected of you and then you see all your coworkers being let go then all of a sudden even though it's not said out loud it's like wow I better do what they're doing or else I'm gonna lose my job that's how you know they say that there's the, the corporate programming is, is program directors were were kind of scared to stand up and, and take risks um, Voice tracking enabled um, stations to all of a sudden go from a full 24-hour on-air staff to, you know, you could get away with three jocks and a part-timer because you could record the breaks and all of a sudden you didn't have to pay for 24 hours worth of, you know, a body in the building. <laughs> you could pay for an hour's worth of voice tracking. So um, it kind of affected the human element and that was one of the biggest strengths of radio, the emotional attachment that listeners had with the on-air talent calling in and making requests, you know. Live. Yeah, the feeling that's, that it's live. DJ's coming on and talking about what just happened on the air. It, it went away, and it, it really had a significant impact on that. Um, and consolidation was a, a big reason for, for all of that to happen. Um, you also had an impact on diversity. You know, I worked for one of the major um, companies, and I know, you know, our one station's library of th 3,500 songs was taken down to 300. Um, they would implicate, 
or employ, employ what they call spatial preemption within markets. Um, Clear Channel would go in and they would all of a sudden have a group of 10 stations within a market. So they would change format so they wouldn't compete against themselves. They wouldn't have two country stations. They'd have a country station and then they would have an AC station instead. Um, and their argument was that they were helping diversity. But if you look at studies done by the Future Music Coalition, I did studies myself, you see that when you look at the actual songs that were played, the artists that were played across the so you know, called change of formats, you saw that there was mass duplication. So there really was a shrinking in you know, the songs and the artists that were being exposed on all of those stations, even though they argue that no, they had all these new formats that, that were being heard. When you actually look at the content, musical content on those formats, then you see that there was a dramatic impact.